You're listening to the Archaeology Podcast Network. All right, welcome to the show, everyone. Joining me today is Christian Stevenhofer. He was born in 1970 and studied German language and literature, communication studies, and American cultural history in Munich. During his studies, he directed and subsidized 16 millimeter short feature film. Uh, I'll get this wrong. Uh, Nachtet. How do you pronounce that? Uh, Nachtschicht. It's called it's Nachtschicht. Night, it's night shift. <laughs> oh, okay. Night shift. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> he then worked as a permanent editor for the science magazine uh, Welt der Wonder. Uh, since 2002, he has been a freelance author and director of documentaries, reports, and image films. Uh, Christian lives with his wife and son in Hamburg. Incidentally, my mom was born in Hamburg when my oh. grandfather was in the army. So <laughs> welcome great. to the show, Christian. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so you were brought to us because you directed the film Unearth the Mystery of the Shaman Woman, which is part of the Archaeos Film Festival this year. And we've done some other interviews for the Archaeos uh, Film Festival. So mm -hmm. why don't you just tell us a little bit about how how this film came to being? Like, what, what brought you to this subject? The good thing for me as a filmmaker was that they're um, like the main scientist of this uh, project, Harald Meller, he wrote a book with an author, Kai Michel, uh, and, and they um, released the book um, even they were in the middle of, of um, they didn't have published uh, the studies and things like that, but they, they, they found the story so uh, worth telling so that they wrote this book, and this was a bestseller in Germany, because this, mm -hmm. this story is just... Uh, it's, it's, it's just a great story. And uh, so a, um, a production company in, in Munich, Southern Browse, they read about the story, they read the book, and then they immediately said, this has to be a major documentary in, in German television. Uh, they, they've been told they, they should contact me because I, I have a track record of, of scientific documentaries um, mm -hmm. that are also entertaining and, uh, and modern. So, and that's uh, yeah. how it came about. And so, um, yeah, so there was okay. a book of, on this story already. Nice. Well, so the, the story is really about a 9,000 year old grave of a shamanist called the uh, shamanist of, and, and you can help me pronounce this, Bad Durenberg is what it looks like. It's not bad, it's Bad. Bad? Bad? <laughs> it's, a, it's, like a, it's like a spa. Uh, where okay. there are uh, fountains, you know, and so uh, yeah. you know, this this healing, healing, and that's also, of course, part of the story. Um, yeah, Bad Dürrenberg. Bad Dürrenberg. Okay. Yeah. And what were some of the the big challenges during the production of this film? Because some of the elements that were included were. It looks like um, computer graphic simulations. You had, uh, you know, filming some of the some of the technicians in a laboratory setting. Obviously, interviews, our archival and historical footage. I mean, this film included a lot drone footage. I mean, there was a yes. lot of elements in this film. Yes. So the main thing I could go into a lot of details, but I think the the most important thing is if you want to tell a story on that level that we are used to that's for german primetime television it's a broadcast sunday evening primetime so it has four million viewers this program it will be a broadcast in november so for this program you have to um you have to produce a um um a film with a high production value and mm -hmm. normally with a story like that we would have the scientific part, the documentary part, and then we would cast actors um, to play the parts or some parts of what happened 9,000 years ago. It's like a feature film uh, element in a documentary. But in this case, the special thing was there's a technology called Unreal Engine, and this comes from mm -hmm. gaming. Um, this is how... As, as you might know, like the, the modern um, computer games, they look more and more realistic and uh, the uh, actors in, in there, they, they behave, they look very realistic. And this, um, this engine can produce um, any realistic movements or um, actions of, of uh, virtual actors in real time and hmm. so <clears throat> the idea was 
to use this uh, technology because um, and and for the first time it has been done at a few projects in German television, but this was really like a front runner thing um, because the thing the the great idea was um, we can uh, we know that they. The, the scientists were gonna have a 3D um, a reconstruction of the face uh, right. done with the skull that they have. The skull is beautifully uh, preserved. Mm -hmm. um, and so with this new technology, um, you don't have an actress that plays the shaman, but you can take the, the, the scientific data of the, the face reconstruction and put that on a virtual actor that you hmm. um, uh, create with this um, with this software engine. And <clears throat> so what we done is we took the data, um, uh, we took um, we we still needed actors in a studio. It's called motion capture. So you capture all the movements of actors. They only wear suits. They don't wear like uh, Stone mm -hmm. Age uh, costumes. They they just wear suits with tracking points. And afterwards, you can map the face of the shaman and other people, and the clothes um, as uh, the science the, the archaeologists believe. Uh, looked like and so what we could do was um, we could uh, create uh, humans that looked like humans 9,000 years ago and we could create also the landscape how it um, possibly and but uh, with all the data has have looked like has looked like uh, 9,000 years ago in in mid middle uh, of Germany so yeah. this is the fascinating thing we got like a tool that that allowed us to to write and shoot compelling scenes mm -hmm. um but based on scientific facts and not like we took actors to finland uh, in, a birch, <laughs> in a birch uh, uh tree uh, uh forest and, right. and 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 uh, um and do like it's uh mesolithic times so yeah, that was the the challenge and and the opportunity, and it was not easy because the technology is not so uh, established. So there were a lot of quirks and um, and um, and errors, and we had, especially in the post production, we had to struggle a lot. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe you can tell me if you like the the outcome. Uh, it was it was actually really really good. Um, I mean, you could with any new technology. I mean, you could obviously tell that it was like like a you know computer animated kind of kind of thing. Sure. But but that didn't really take away from it either because I thought it was uh, I thought it was really well done. But I think a question I would have for you because of the because of the advantages you have in that um, was it was it more expensive to do it this way um, because of the newness of the technology uh, versus like flying an entire production crew to Finland and costumes and all that stuff? You know, is it, is it going to be better for filmmakers in the long run to perfect this technology and cause it'll come down in price? I think you have to really decide. I mean, uh, I'd say in a, for a story like this, it, it has definitely its advantages. Um, mm -hmm. For anything that's more in the uh, in, in the present, I'd I'd go with uh, because um, uh, one main advantage was that it's mainly in forests and and you know on a river. But if you have to create a whole city with the new technology, that might right. be a lot of uh, maybe even more uh, uh, challenging to make it this believable. Sure. But um, the cost factor uh, with all new things, um, there was a lot of post-production manpower put in to, to get the results. Um, but uh, yeah, as I said, uh, the, the, the opportunity to do it and the, the possibilities are really great because as a filmmaker, it's like kind of a, a childhood dream because you can say the camera now is in a bird's eye view and then I want to have the camera on 
behind this tree and you couldn't put the camera anywhere you like uh, <laughs> in this 3D world. Uh, yeah. So it's a dream. And um, But on the other hand, uh, you cannot tell the actor once the thing is um, is captured. You cannot make any changes and you cannot... Uh, um, say smile a little more. Then it's it's a difficult a difficult thing to tell these. Uh, they are called meta humans. <laughs> um, <laughs> they should they should uh, smile a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. All right. Well, I, I have a few more questions that I think we'll save sure. till segment two. But before we do that, uh, we've got a special guest kind of waiting in the wings here. Let's bring him mm-hmm. on now. Go ahead and turn on your video, Jean. How's it going? Hi, Chris. Uh, hello, Christian. Hello, Jean. Nice to Good meet to you. See you. <laughs> uh, the uh, Archaeos uh, jury president, uh, Guy Perrotta, is a filmmaker, mm-hmm. uh, could not be here today. Okay. But he wrote three points about the film uh, Unearthed uh, the Mystery of the uh, Shaman Woman. Mm-hmm. His first point was the storytelling is excellent. Thank you. And it's very compelling to the general viewer. Mm-hmm. He continues by saying, those with a strong interest in archaeology will find it completely absorbing, as will the general public. Mm-hmm. And he concludes, as a filmmaker, this is also quite a feat for the filmmakers. Mm-hmm. With that assessment, I have an announcement to make on behalf of the Archeos 2024 uh, jury and its uh, jury president and its president, Guy Perrotta. The grand prize of the Archeos Film Festival 2024 is attributed to Ernest the mystery of the shaman woman, director Christian Stephen Hofer, producer Nicola Cole, Germany. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> but that's really, really great news. Wow. I'm, uh, whew, that's uh, so Congratulations. nice to, to hear. And uh, the, the words of Guy Perotta in your, in your mouth. Um, yeah, that's really uh, humbling, and uh, uh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm <laughs> a bit. I, I didn't expect that the, uh, any prize was announced today. <laughs> well, okay. uh, well, congratulations again, and I'll let you go back to what you, you are doing uh, in the interview. Well, that was a okay. nice interruption, Jean. <laughs> <laughs> Thank All you, right. Chris, for letting me uh, pop in. All right. Well, with that fantastic announcement, uh, we'll take a break and we'll be back with segment two. Back in a minute. Welcome back to the Archaeology Show. And we're here with Christian. And she's got some additional questions about the filming of this uh, filming of this documentary. So I'm curious about the Mesolithic environments and things like that. Did you guys bring on additional experts in archaeology in these environments, or was it the um, was it the archaeologists involved in the uh, the excavation and the research for the book and the things like that 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 helped do that recreation? It was a mixture of both. Uh, so we asked asked the um, the archaeologists involved how what what. Um, uh facts they have on the landscape of this area what kind of tree seeds uh, and things like that they have uh, found in uh, like from this time or so and also because um this uh, group of sci- tolid- uh, sci- uh, scientists is based with the um, museum in Halle um, mm-hmm. So they do a lot of um, visualizing uh, Mesolithic uh, er- ages too. So it kind of um, they had a lot uh, a lot of of data and they did like drawings of of this time. 
And so we could use that. And and then also, but they uh, also um, asked um, other um, other uh, specialists to to give us some some hints about what was um, what was uh, possibly the landscape. Because of course, uh, it's a long time, and you cannot be sure 100%. But but this is. What we yeah. show is how it may have looked like, and with a with a high possibility. Sure, sure. And who? Well, I guess I should start with how did you get funding for a project like this, and who funded it? Because it must have been, uh, it must have been pretty highly, pretty high in funding <laughs> for something like this. <laughs> well, it's a. I would say it's not like a super high budget, but it's a. Yeah. It's a good budget for documentary, and this comes from. As I told you, the uh, the, uh, the the time slot when this program it's part of a, it's the most uh, acclaimed science um, program in German television. It's called Terra X, and this is um, a Sunday primetime um, program. Um, and so, yeah, that they they are the main. Um, the main uh, f f f they they gave the main budget, but there's also mm -hmm. a, a second ne network called Arte, which is a French uh, a okay. documentary channel and documentary and arts and culture channel, and so this was like a co-production between the two of them. But there was okay. no public funding or things like that. It's hmm. it's from these two networks. Okay, and are there plans to do any other documentary films like this or following up in this, uh, in this genre or, or anything like that? Um, we would definitely love to do, uh, mm -hmm. more, but the story has to be, has to be, uh, right for it. As I told you, I, yeah. I would not see like to use this technology in a 1900 time piece <laughs> or something like that. Um, but, uh, if if there's a similar uh, story or project in archaeology, that would be sure. really great because in the next years, this technology will evolve dramatically even, and it will be even more easy to to adapt this technology to environments or humans that you want to create. And so I think... Uh, that's one of the the biggest challenges for mm -hmm. um, making films about archaeology is that it's all stones and uh, stones and bones, you know. And uh, what? <laughs> how can you visualize? These were people living. Uh, the, they had uh, lives. They had emotions. Uh, and so, um, this technology really offers a lot of uh, possibilities in this field. Outstanding. All right. Well, anything else you'd like to say about this production, your experience, or or anything related to this or the Archives Film Festival? Um, no, I just um, like one one thing that for me personally personally was was very uh, entertaining about this whole story is. Um, it has this uh, Nazi component because the yeah. first uh, digging was uh, in 1934 and the Nazis, the, the archaeologists who were involved in the case uh, in this time, they wanted to show that Germans are like the blonde uh, Nor Nordic kind of <laughs> Aryan, Aryan, you say Aryans. Yeah. Um, and they want to have proof that that Aryans are from this area, the German mm -hmm. area. And of course, Aryans are from Iran, Iran and, and, and north of, of India. And so they really searched proof. And when they found this, uh, these bones, they, they said, we found proof that this is like the, <laughs> the ancient Aryan. <laughs> And so they didn't see that it's a woman. They thought it's a mm -hmm. man, of course. So that was their first uh, uh, mistake. 
And, and then the second thing is that um, with the archaeogenetics and uh, the analysis they, they did in the Max Planck Institute, yeah. Yeah, in, in how dark they, skin. it showed it's a dark. <laughs> they, she yeah. had a dark skin, uh, right. so uh, that's for me. It's really um, in this situation in Germany where the the far right is is coming up. So this is like a very great example for how you judge things. So they thought mm -hmm. it's a blonde male and uh, Aryan, and in reality with with science, you can show it. It's a woman. It's a woman with with a dark skin, the as all people had in <laughs> Germany at this time. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I love that aspect of the story. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Incidentally, listeners to this show know it's it's amazing. In the last couple of years, we're finding that it wasn't just Germany in that time period. A lot of archaeological scholars from a lot of archaeological scholars in the 20s, 30s, 40s, even 50s and 60s were white males in, in that time period, right? And yeah. and Germany had its own thing going on trying to prove their sure. ancestry, right? But it wasn't just them. Uh, they had their own motivations, but there was a lot of people who were in that, you know, white male category trying to say, you know, put putting male and female into certain boxes. And we're finding out yeah. a lot in the last couple of decades yeah. and, and really a lot in the last decade that this sexual division of labor and different things is just, which simply just wasn't true. And, yeah. and women were doing things that, that just, you know, were not true that we thought were true in the archeological record because men said this in, in, in the fifties and thirties and forties. And it's just, everything's changing and for the better, and we're having a better understanding through genetics and through better analysis, to be honest with you. And, uh, and we're, we're changing a lot of what we've thought were long held assumptions. Absolutely. And that's what I love yeah. about this story. So this is like the, 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 uh, most, um, advanced grave, uh in in middle europe uh yeah. that you that, that you will find and it belongs to a woman and yep. uh so um yeah she might be very uh, she she she'd have been very powerful and a very fascinating person and um so yeah these are the interesting stories and and only because there's uh there's a stone knife uh, of uh, many knives mm -hmm. of course i don't know the the the, the specific uh, expression, but uh, yeah. of course, in the, as you said, in the 50s, 60s, archaeologists said, okay, there's a knife that must be a man right, uh, right. And, or an axe, <laughs> you know, and yeah. uh, but that's not true. So, no. Uh, yeah. No. Well, I got to say it was a, uh, a beautiful way to tell the story through your film. And uh, we really appreciate that as, as archaeologists. It's really hard to communicate archaeological evidence right and yeah. this was this was done uh in, in like i said it was done in a very beautiful way uh, a, a way that gets the technology and the uh in a very complex story uh across and i think it's gonna educate a lot of people around the world um and it's gonna and it's gonna get that story out there so and congratulations again on the uh the archaeos uh film festival award well the I have to thank you again. That's really that's mind blowing, uh, such a <laughs> such a present uh, for for us. And um, uh, I guess uh, when when it's it's out, we will really uh, open some champagne here in Germany. <laughs> I, I can tell you. Uh, no, thank you very much. And um, I hope this film could be. Uh, I, I think it's in. Uh, so the the network put it in world distribution. I hope. It can be seen mm -hmm. in, in some channel in, in the U.S. Uh, very soon. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's a awesome. great story. And, uh, yeah, thanks. All right. Well, thank you, Christian. And we'll be back on the Archaeology Show to wrap this up in segment three. Thanks a lot. Welcome back to episode 283 of the Archaeology Show. Uh, if you're... If you're watching this on, well, if you're listening to this, I guess, on the uh, podcast like normal, there is a video component, which we don't often do, but since this is for the Archaeos Film Festival, we did have the first two segments where we revealed, obviously, the 
um, winner of the Archaeos Film Festival. So, mm -hmm. um, and I did that interview, but now we're bringing on Rachel to talk about the film. Yes. Yeah, and uh, there might be some little tendrils of stuff in the video here because it's actually 49 degrees out Fahrenheit. It doesn't feel that cold though. <laughs> like I feel totally fine right now. I don't know about Well that's because we're sitting in front of a fire. Well true. Um, that's where the uh, the little stuff here. I was going to try to get the fire for ambiance in the camera frame but it's just not going to work. Right. I didn't want to be zoomed out too far but we're still sitting in front of the fire because you know it's cold. It's fall. Um, but we have hot coffee, mm -hmm. hot tea. Uh, representing notes notes <laughs> yeah so uh, all the stuff you don't normally see on the podcast yes. so yeah. there we go yeah all right so anyway let's talk about uh, unearthed the mystery of the shaman woman um, mm -hmm. again this was very well done and you can't actually see the film yet unless you participated in the Archaeos Film Festival and we were told again not to release this until the announcement was made um, so as you're seeing this, the announcement has been made, mm -hmm. um, but it's actually not releasing in Germany until um, November, Sometime I believe. Sometime in November, And yeah. I don't know when it's going to release in the United States. So. Well, he didn't have distribution yet, I don't think. No, so, no. But we got to see it because, you know, in preparation for this interview. We had to see it. Yeah, and honestly, this movie was so cool. Movie. Yeah. Do you really call it a movie? Documentary. Documentary, <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Here's what it was. It felt like an episode, uh, a really well done episode of some kind of scientific documentary that you would see on like National Geographic. Yeah, like anything or, Nat Geo would produce or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but but it didn't feel like sensationalized. Yeah. Like those kind of shows often can. The story building and the storytelling in the episode was super well done mm -hmm. so that you didn't, I don't know, sometimes those shows can just like focus on like some of the the sensational stuff and then yeah. like lose the story right but this one like storytelling was clearly like first and foremost and they did a really mm -hmm. good job with that yeah i thought the the graphics were really well done the mm -hmm. um and as we talked about in segment two they the used a, the, a really a relatively new technology to do all the computer graphics and mm -hmm. I, I really like where that has a potential of going yeah i was a little not unsure about that when i first watched it but after hearing the interview, like I totally understand why mm -hmm. they did it like that, and it actually makes sense. And he was saying in the interview that like he wouldn't want to do it for a more recent time period in history, mm -hmm. but this very old time period was it like Mesolithic or something yeah. like that? I think it was. It worked perfectly. It was great, and they really were able to like recreate the feeling of being among the people that they were mm -hmm. using this like. Um, video game technology yeah. to represent, right? Yeah. So that was really cool. Yeah, it was pretty neat. Mm -hmm. So anything that kind of stuck out with you in the film that uh, mm -hmm. maybe maybe was not represented accurately or anything like that that you can remember? I don't know. I don't really think so. Yeah. I mean, I again, it was this like the storytelling was so good that mm -hmm. it felt like it started. It almost felt like it started going in one direction and then tied up in another direction mm -hmm. just because the story sort of meandered through about who this woman was in the burial what she was thought to be when they first uncovered her you know by the nazis and you guys talked about in the, that in the interview a little mm -hmm. bit and then what newer research has shown that she actually was a woman and that she was a shaman and i think for me the most interesting piece of the whole thing was this um not disorder but this oh. the this issue that she probably had yeah. in her spine or they can see that she had in her spine where she could make her eye, eyelids flutter yeah. by tipping her head way back and i just thought that was so cool because that's like a, a disorder basically right yeah. but because of that she would she would have been able to spin that into like a a shaman yeah she was a shaman because of that or in part because of that so having a disorder in the past may not have necessarily meant you're an outcast. It might have made you a really, really important person to this community. So. It is interesting because I feel like, I can't point to where I've seen this before, but I feel like I've heard of that in the, in the last few years of maybe that specific thing uh, with, the, with the eyelids, mm -hmm. but also certain other, what we would call disabilities today, being mm -hmm. advantages in the past. As long as it didn't say, you know, slow you down yeah uh, like some sort of physical disability that you know like i said with some some sort of like slow you down or something like that but something that would 
make you stand out mm -hmm. and make and you different make you different yeah. enough to like where people are like oh my god that person is you know communing with spirits or powers. Yeah, yeah some sort of special ability or something yeah. um and, and uh and really did you know mm -hmm. kind of set you above everybody else which was an interesting way of, of looking at it so yeah and like totally <laughs> randomly but kind of related we have a new show on the yeah Ar on arc Neck called adhd bce where the host is actually like looking for that kind of stuff and talking to people yeah. who are experts in that kind of um what does he call it um Neurodivergent. Neuro neurodivergent. Neuro neurodivergent. Yeah. yeah. So it's so cool. Yeah, and what I like about it is, and what I, where I hope George, the host, goes with this, is, and where he, where he kind of wants to go with this mm -hmm. is, you know, people aren't generally looking for neurodivergent traits in archaeological in the archaeological past specifically, mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. not yet, at least not everybody is. Some people probably are, but yeah. but he, what I would like to see him do, and and other people do, is maybe bring on guests that have worked on sites like the one in the film yeah and then look at these and say okay look at this through a different lens and yeah. say understand what these traits might look like and say wow some of these people may have had certain um, what we would call disabilities today yeah. um, or these neurodivergent traits which aren't necessarily even considered disabilities anymore right and and say yeah uh, i think we can see evidence of that yeah. uh, just in the in the way people behaved or act or maybe mm -hmm. certain burials or something like that yeah i think th that it's easier to see when there's a physical manifestation in the bones like this example in the movie mm -hmm. there's a physical representation in her bones of what this disorder yeah. looked like but i'm sure that there's a lot more that maybe aren't represented in the bones that you have to look for in different ways and it's really interesting to look for that stuff yeah. and try to figure out where it where it is and how it might have made those people different, how it would have changed their relationship to the community, if at all. Maybe it didn't. Who knows? Right. So, yeah, right. interesting. <laughs> all right. Well, we hope everybody gets a chance to see this movie. Yeah. If you're in Europe, especially in France and Germany, right, <laughs> right. you're going to be able to watch it on like regular TV next month sometime. Yeah. And then I know they're hoping to get it in a wider release and mm -hmm. hopefully it'll make it to, you know, one of our streaming platforms or something because it's so worth a look. Can people still watch it if they sign up for the film festival? I'm not sure how long it's going to be available at the yeah, film festival because everything Cause it's a virtual festival. Yeah, and all the movies were free to watch if you signed up for the film festival. Yeah. We'll have a link to that in the show notes. If it's still there, it's still there. Great. Go check it out. If yeah. not, then you'll have to wait until it gets released more widely. I would say the minute you're watching this podcast, go check out the links yeah. in the show notes because um, we're linking to the Archives Film Festival. Yeah. Like she said, it, it is a free sign up, so mm -hmm. go check it out. Um, it's an hour long documentary, yeah. um, so go look at it. There's no commercials or anything. Uh, so it is an hour long mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it's definitely worth uh, worth a look. And if you don't have time for that, there's a whole bunch of short films on there that you can go take a look mm -hmm. at. Some of them some are of the just a few minutes long. Some of the ones we talked about in the past episodes. Yeah, yeah. there's there's some really cool stuff on there to see for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of really neat things. So yep. um, I think with that, we'll call it here yep. and uh, go check out some of the films. And we'll be back next time with our thoughts and experiences on some of the things we did in Washington, D.C. a few weeks ago. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, all right. See you later. Bye. Thanks for listening to The Archaeology Show. Feel free to comment and view the show notes on the website at www.arcpodnet.com. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at ArcPodNet. Music for this show is called I Wish You Would Look from the band Sea Hero. Again, thanks for listening and have an awesome day. This episode was produced by Chris Webster from his RV traveling the United States, Tristan Boyle in Scotland, DigTech LLC, Cultural Media, and the Archaeology Podcast Network, and was edited by Rachel Roden. This has been a presentation of the Archaeology Podcast Network. Visit us on the web for show notes and other podcasts at www.archpodnet.com. Contact us at chris at archaeologypodcastnetwork.com.